Welcome to the today's briefing, everyone. Today is a fan requested video to talk about the brand new Taiwanese conventionally powered diesel electric submarine. So Taiwan christened the High Kun class submarine, hull one of four on September 28th, 2023. Uh, this keel was laid all the way back in November, 2020. So it took them just under three years to finish. And her designation is SS 711. It's the first indigenous design and construction, but it's full of foreign equipment and American weapons, specifically uh, the Mark 48 Advanced Capability Mod 6 torpedo uh, can be shot here. She does have an interesting double single hull hybrid design, an X uh, style configuration on the rudder. Uh, there's currently no master antennas installed yet, and we'll go into why that is later. She does have an advanced modular scalable sonar system that I'll show you. Uh, no towed array, but a great flank array, and some interesting, um, probably capable, if they use the American version, torpedo decoys on each side. They have a dozen launchers for these six-inch decoys. They could be three-inch, but they look like six-inch ones. I'm not sure. But 12 port, 12 starboard, a lot of decoys for a little conventional submarine. And she's going to need them. So let's talk about uh, the construction itself. This is taken from a video produced from uh, by Taiwan and they uh, censored a lot of it. So a lot of it's a little blurry, but I'll point out what I was able to make out of this. The submarine is constructed in cylindrical segments like you see here. This looks like segment one. This is the pressure hull. This is where the crew and equipment are gonna operate. And the segment is riding on a yellow mobile cradle that can move around and it will be shifted with a crane over onto the blue cradles that are static. So I started label things here for you. The pressure hull is made of steel. This is a steel hull submarine. It is approximately eight meters in diameter. That's a very rough estimate I was able to make based on uh, the other things in the room here. Uh, the second level appears to be very small and may just be for cable runs and equipment. It's possible that this is a single level submarine for people and crew and equipment. And then the battery well below them with the bilges and then a small space overhead again for equipment and cable runs. I don't know if that second level is actually large enough for a, a person to, to operate in. I do want to address a concern I saw immediately on social media as soon as these pictures came out. Um, on the right hand side, you can see the pressure hull of the submarine is steel. The welds are smooth and proper. And if this is an averagely you know, built submarine, it can go down and withstand depths of say 300 meters is a good guess. The picture on the left, the outer hull is what got everyone's attention. It appears to be flawed or have imperfections in the, in the construction. Well, this is a sheet metal double hull cover that is outside the pressure hull. So this one does not need to be perfectly smooth or round to withstand uh, pressures optimally because this will be in a free flood area where there's water on both the inside and the outside of the sheet metal. So it's not supporting any pressure. Um, it's just there to help the water flow around the submarine as it moves through the water while it's underway. So this is a hybrid double hull, single hull design. And I have a better picture coming up for you showing what you exactly what that means. All right, so right here, this is what a hybrid hull design looks like. The red arrows are looking at the pressure hull. That's where the people and the equipment are gonna be protected at depth. Uh, note the hull near the sail is a single hull and I've outlined that in red. So. Right there, they're making the most of the space that they have for people and equipment with a single hull design. The bow compartment and the engine room is where it gets very narrow. And so instead of having a narrow, wide, narrow design, they put a second hull around it, making it more oval and giving it less hydrodynamic resistance, giving it more speed whenever it's underway. That's the purpose of that second hull. And because it's sheet metal, it's very light. It's not adding a lot of weight to the submarine. All right, here's the engine room assembly. Uh, you can see the submarine there on the left. The engine room, part of the engine room, I should say, is on the segment that's standing vertically. They're going to take the cover off, attach a crane to it, pivot so it's horizontal, and then attach it into uh, the submarine segment itself. And that's how the submarine is constructed. It's in these little segments that they just weld together one after the other, putting piping and equipment in as they go along. Here you can see the outer hull is already mounted on part of this engine room. So that would be the, the double hull outside. And on the inside is the single hull pressure hull, which is where the engine room is. And you can see on top, there's a hole for the shaft to go in and marry with the electric motor, the prime mover, 
that's going to push it through the water. Here is that same piece that was sitting vertically is now been welded and attached to the submarine itself. And you have a much clearer view of the hole where the shaft is going to go into. Now sitting on that cradle that's vertical is the aft end cap. This is the final piece that's going to be attached to the rear end or aft end of the submarine. Uh, as the water goes around and comes into where the propeller is, the propeller is going to sit right on the tip where I have the yellow arrow saying aft end. Also, in the background, I noticed these covers, and it looks like this is the electric motor and shaft assembly sitting ready for installation. This is a diesel electric submarine. It does not have air independent power, though, which is a severe limitation in the 21st century. Most modern conventionally powered submarines or diesel electric submarines have AIP. This one does not. So they're already starting out, in my opinion, at a, as a disadvantage. What that makes this is essentially a Taiwan version of what appears to be the Dutch Walrus class. And we have a sub-brief on the Walrus class. I recommend you watch that if you want to know more about it. And there is some influence of the Australian Collins class visible in this design. So it's like they married those two submarines together, assembled it in Taiwan, and put European, and Amer European systems on it with American weapons. So it's a combination of all those things together. All right, so let's flip perspectives here. We're going to look at the bow of the submarine. We just watched the aft end, the engine room get assembled. Now we're going to look at the forward part. This is just forward of the sail now. Uh, they've already put the crew compartment in. This would be uh, where the torpedo room would go. And right in front of the torpedo room is going to be the, um, the sonar, the syndrillic sonar array. And that's going to be a free flood area. They've blurred out the sonar array smartly. But it looks like it is a cylinder. Uh, it could be a conformal array, which would be more modern in standards with today's submarines. But it appears to be a, a syndrillic array. Not a big difference. Uh, the syndrillic array would be cheaper and easier to mount and connect and operate. Um, the conformal array would require a lot more you know, technical expertise. And they may not have wanted to spend time doing that. They're trying to build the submarine fast with technology that's already proven. And that's a wise move. In the front there, you see the sonar dome is sitting on the floor. They're getting ready to raise that up with a crane and place it over the bow of the submarine. And that's going to protect not just the sonar array, but the, tor the torpedo tubes there and also move the water around the sub as it moves through the water. After they've mounted the bow uh, cover, you can see there the sonar dome is on now. They have four or five pieces of this in their video. It looks like a topside housing. So the double hull goes from the port side over the top and into the starboard side where the walkway is there, both forward of the sail and after the sail. This piece appears to be the one that attaches just aft of the sail over top of the single hull pressure hull going towards the engine room there. And they had a number of these in their assembly video. Now that our submarine is completely assembled, we can see the final form of this Taiwanese submarine. It's a hybrid double single hull design. And I've labeled those here with the yellow double hull uh, letters and the single hull kind of stands out there in white. And I put the arrows to show you exactly where the boundaries are of the single hull and then the double hull. The X rudder does not protrude below the keel, which is why they've installed it here. This Submarine clearly is designed to operate in littoral waters, and the X-Rudder configuration will help with that. Also, whenever they want to change course or, or depth, all four X-Rudders will move uh, for that depth change, which means each surface would move less than if only two surfaces were used to control the submarine's depth or course change. So normally, in older designs, you would have a crucifix or cross um, stern plane rudder configuration. Well, the stern planes only change depth and the rudder only changes course. By putting that canted at a 45 degree angle, you can use all four planes all the time, which means you don't need to move them as far because you have twice as many operating. This means there's less chance of cavitation or making mechanical or hydro, or, um, yeah, hydro noise whenever you're moving through the water because you're not moving each surface as far. So this is why a lot of the new submarines are using this X 
configuration. Uh, the flank sonar array is clearly visible there. Underneath the flag, you can see the boundaries of it. This is a low frequency capable array. And there is no towed array on the submarine. And that makes sense for this design because a towed array comes with a lot of baggage in terms of operating envelope and other restrictions. And by not having any of those restrictions, but still having low frequency search capability with this flank array, they kind of get a towed array like search without all those limitations. So this was a good call. So this is the high con class diesel electric submarine. Uh, it's sitting in an assembly building right now, even though she is christened. Uh, we're, they're waiting on mast and antennas at time of this recording. There is something wrong with that supply chain. It's been delayed. I don't know how serious that is or how much more time that's gonna take, but that's what we're waiting on right now. So she's not even in the water yet. She is expected to start sea trials in 2024 and assuming those go well she'll be in service in 2025. so my opinion of the submarine is it's a taiwan version of a dutch walrus class with some australian calling class influence uh, it's the most significant limitation is that it's not air independent powered so it doesn't have aip and because of that it's going to be vulnerable to a long-term asw pursuit she will not be able to stay uh, submerged for as long as an aip submarine would that also affects torpedo evasion. She's not gonna be able to kick the power to the propulsion for long periods of time to get out of the way of a weapon or evade a weapon uh, as effectively as an AIP submarine would. So in terms of survivability, not having AIP is a severe limitation. That's my one major concern is, but she's not even in the water yet. Once we get some sea trial information about her, uh, we'll make a follow-up video to this. This will probably be next year or maybe even two years from now before we know more and see how well uh, she actually performs underway. All right, so this is the Haikun class uh, briefing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks everybody, bye. Hey everyone, it's Aaron here again. I just wanna say thank you to everybody that reached out to me over the last week and week and a half. Um, very kind words, very kind messages from so many people. Really gave me perspective on what kind of audience we have here. You guys are extremely generous, knowledgeable, and kind. And getting those three attributes in a single community, especially on a social media platform, is very rare. So thank you for being part of this community and making it one of the best on YouTube, Patreon, and social media in general. I really do appreciate it.